What can a bag of M&Ms teach us about statistics? Turns out a lot. Today I'm going to use this bag of peanut butter M&Ms to explain basic statistics. We'll build on the information that we learned today over the coming weeks as we delve deeper into different statistics topics. Statistics involves gathering, organizing, analyzing, and displaying different data or information. If we take this bowl of M&Ms, there's a lot that we can learn about basic statistic information. We can make a note of how many M&Ms there are of each color. We could also pick out M&Ms and check how much does each M&M weigh. We could also record information off the packaging. When was it manufactured and where? All of these different pieces of data tell us something about the M&M. If we collect all of these data points I just mentioned, we'll have a variety of descriptions discrete and continuous variables. Discrete variables describe things like, what color is my M&M? Where we have six options. We have red, orange, yellow, blue, green, and brown options. It can only be one of those colors. That's what makes it discrete. We also have continuous variables. If I pick any two M&Ms from this bowl, and let's just take these two as examples, you can see this brown M&M is a lot bigger than the yellow one, and the brown one's weight is going to be higher than the yellow one. If we go through and measure the weight of each of these M&Ms, we're going to find some variance here. We know that it's going to be on a weight spectrum, and the finer our scale is, the more precisely we can measure exactly what each M&M weighs. Using this information that's available about each of these M&Ms can help us start to understand something about M&Ms as a whole. There are 159 M&Ms in this bowl from that sharing size bag of peanut butter M&Ms. I've gone through and made a spreadsheet of the color of each M&M and the weight of each M&M. From that information, we can look at descriptive statistics about these M&Ms. Descriptive statistics are the ones we tend to hear about most often. Think about any news report that has some amount of data in it. It's probably something like the average 50-year-old has $125,000 saved for retirement. These descriptive statistics are often called measures of central tendency. They tell us in the entire group that we have, how close are things to one single point? Do we have a center point that describes our data well? In one single figure, they tell us something about our data. The most common measures of central tendency are mean, median, and mode. Mean is the same thing that we think of as average. It's taking the weight of every M&M in this bowl and adding them up and then dividing by the total number I have. In this case, our average or mean weight for M&Ms is 1.72 grams. Median is the middle value when we arrange all of our data points from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. It's the score that splits the group in half. Half of our data is below that point and half of our data is above that point. Median is helpful because it helps limit the impact of outliers. If I have this one big M&M for instance, that's probably going to weigh a lot more than my average M&M, which let's say this one represents. But we don't wanna to give too much credit to this guy because there's only one of them. So when I look at the median weight of all of these M&Ms based on the data points I collected, I found that the median is 1.69. So that's 0.03 grams lower than our average. That means based on our average, we probably have a few outliers that are on the heavy end versus the lower end because my middle point is a lower weight. It was easy for me to find the median in my data because I had an odd number of points. So there was a very specific data point in the middle. If you have an even number of points, you take the two middle points, add them together and divide by two to get your median value. Lastly, mode is the most frequently occurring value within your data. For this particular sample of M&Ms, the mode was 1.64 grams. So the weight that I saw the most often in the data was 1.64 grams which is even lower than our median and lower than our mean or average. If you have two values that tie, we call this a bimodal distribution. 
And if you have more than two values that tie, we call this a multimodal distribution. We'll talk more about distributions in a future video. For our M&Ms, we do have a difference between the mean, median, and mode of our M&M weight. In this case, it seems like it's fairly small, but sometimes the difference of these can be drastically different and tell very drastically different stories. For instance, let's go back to that example I used of the average 50-year-old having $125,000 in retirement savings. That's the average or the mean savings. However, if we look at the median savings, it's $8,000. That is drastically different. That means half of 50-year-olds have less than $8,000 saved for retirement and half have more. Why are those values so different? Well, the simple explanation is that the majority of people have very little saved for retirement and the ones that have saved for retirement generally have saved a high amount. People that are 50 and have had a retirement plan at work that they've been contributing to may have hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars that they've accumulated over their working life Whereas other people that didn't have access to retirement savings or didn't have the funds to be able to contribute may not have anything or may barely have anything saved for retirement. You can also calculate mean, median, and mode in Excel. Let's look at how to do that. To calculate these measures of central tendency in Excel, the first thing I need to do is gather all of my data. I'm recording each data point from my M&Ms, weighing each one and noting the color. In most cases, you'll already have your data collected and may just need to format it in a table that contains the information you need. While I'm capturing the color here, I really wouldn't need to be typing that into my spreadsheet. I just know that in the future, I'm going to use that to figure out other things related to statistics about my population. Now we have this complete list of all 159 M&Ms in the package with a record of the color and weight of each one. I want to go ahead and calculate my measures of central tendency, and I'm going to start by setting up a small table where we'll record our data. I'm going to label each point that I'm collecting so it's very clear which data point is which. we'll have our mean or average, our median, and our mode. Let's start out by calculating our mean. The Excel formula for mean or average is equals average, and then you include the values that you want to average. These can be either comma separated or they can be a range. Here's what that looks like on our data. We're going to take the average of cells B2 through B160, which contains all of our weight data points. Notice that my measurement value, the grams, is in my label, not in my data. Now let's look at median. The Excel formula for median is equals a median and then the values to include. Similar to our formula for average or mean, your values can be either comma separated or a range. In our case, we're going to be using the same range we used for mean or average, and we're going to take the median of cells B2 through B160. Lastly, we're going to take the mode. Again, a very similar formula equals mode and then our values to include, which can either be comma separated or a range. We're again taking that same range that we've used for our last two formulas. The last thing that I want to do is correct my number of decimal places to match my input data. So in our case, our input data had two decimal places in the gram weight. I'm going to go ahead and change my number format to reflect two decimal places for the mean, median, and mode. You can see in these results that our mean, median, and mode are the same things that we talked about earlier in the video. These Excel formulas are a very quick way to be able to calculate information about your data. If you're using an analytics program instead, 
Those also will allow you to quickly calculate these mean, median, and mode values, though the formulas are likely to be slightly different. Next week, we'll talk about frequency distributions. Thanks so much for watching.